tonight on the program, a special coverage of the eastern region of Thailand. Most of the time we find out why more Russians are visiting Thailand, especially the popular resort city of Pattaya. What the local government is doing to tackle the mountain of garbage on Gotland. And why Thrat has been designated as a special economic zone. Swadika and welcome to the special edition of This Week with Thai PBS World as we're on a mission in the eastern region of Thailand. And when we think of the eastern region, we would often think of Pattaya, which is the most popular destination among tourists around the world. And it has been reported that more Russians are coming to Pattaya, whether it's for the food, the culture, but also to seek refuge from the Russian-Ukraine war. We have more details in this report by Dirapa Budyatat. After every crisis, we see the resilience of Thailand's tourism industry. Last year, there were 11.15 million foreign visitors, an increase from just about 400,000 in 2021, when COVID-19 travel restrictions were in place. This year, the country doubled its tourism target to 25 million. Among tourists from around the globe, Russians are the second largest group of visitors, and many of them come to Pattaya. I'm here for more than three years. Most of the time I spent in Koh Phangan, in the island of Soratani province. Uh, then I used to live in Bangkok, and now last month, maybe three or four months, I spent here in Pattaya. This is not the first time that Dimitri, a digital nomad, has lived in Thailand. But this time, he hopes to stay here as long as he can. For him, it's much more convenient and comfortable to be able to speak the local language. Also, he thinks that to dive into local culture, he should be able to speak Thai. Therefore, he has enrolled himself in a Thai language school in Pattaya. We ask his opinion on why so many Russian tourists like to come to Pattaya. It's basically word of mouth. I think it's sort of a tradition for Russians because, you know, maybe some first group of Russians came here and they recommended it to their friends and then next came and, you know, it makes like a snowfall, you know, it goes and more and more and more because the more people Russian come here, they have more reviews, they write somewhere and the more come. Indeed, word of mouth is very powerful. These Russian tourists decided to come to Thailand because of what he had heard from his friend. His friend, who has been living here and giving positive reviews about the country for many years, recommended that he come to Thailand. He said that Thailand is much better than he expected. He would like to see other parts of the country, prolong his stay and learn the Thai language. Nearly 400,000 Russian tourists have visited Thailand so far this year. Most of them come to Thailand during high season as it is too cold in their hometowns. Also, there are other reasons such as the conflict between Russia and Ukraine yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know a lot of people who came here uh, for this reason. Maybe it's not the only reason yet, yeah, because uh, when they decide to escape Russia, they have plenty of options where to go, uh, and they choose Thailand. Uh, so it's not the only reason, but of course, uh, a lot of people now run away from Russia because they don't want to be involved anyhow. Maybe they don't want to go to Ukraine to die there for something unknown for them and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, there are much, much more Russian people here because of uh, what's going on there in Europe. Dimitri suggests that before coming to Thailand, 
his fellow Russians should learn to speak basic English and more importantly to learn about Thai culture. When they want to buy beer or they want like a back, yeah, or they don't want a back, yeah, they try to explain this on Russian, just speaking maybe more in loud way, yeah, or kind of, yeah. It's, uh, from my point of view, it's a little bit silly and I don't like this approach. Uh, I would recommend them to know some basic words, at least on English, but better on Thai as well. Jirapa Bunyatat, reporting for Thai PBS World. In the eastern region of Thailand, another popular destination is Gotland, which is 15 minutes away from Pattaya. It is known for its beautiful beaches, but at the same time, it is also known for this massive garbage dump. We find out what the local government is actually doing to deal with this long-standing problem. Gotland, an island off the coast of Pattaya, attracts thousands of local and foreign tourists with its white sandy beaches and clear sea water. The increase in tourism on the island has undeniably led to this, a massive garbage dump. At least 20 tons of waste is dumped at this landfill every day, mounting up to 70,000 tons, with about 20,000 above ground and the remaining 50,000 buried beneath it. Most of the garbage is plastic waste and construction-related materials such as wood and bricks. In the past, most of the trash from Gotland was shipped to Pattaya for disposal. Since the Interior Ministry imposed regulations on waste management in 2015, all of the waste generated on the island has been piling up into a massive landfill. In Gotland, แต่แรกก็จะมีขยะประมาณวันละประมาณ there does, however, seem to be a way out. The local government plans to complete the installation of two incinerators this year with the capacity to burn at least 50 tons a day of the existing waste at the landfill, including newly generated waste. The deputy mayor predicts, however, that it will take at least seven years to burn all of the accumulated waste in the landfill. Burning waste also raises concerns over the negative environmental impacts. The deputy mayor offered a reassurance that the use of incinerators has been carefully considered to reduce the impact on the environment and the residents. สำหรับภาคตะวันตกแล้วก็มีนะครับมีบ้างนะครับแต่ Previously, Thailand's Pollution Control Department laid out a roadmap on plastic waste management between 2018 and 2030. One of the targets is to reduce the use of single-use plastics and to adopt a circular economy model for plastics. Despite solutions at the government level, reducing waste requires cooperation from all sectors, particularly from tourists, by refraining from bringing in plastic waste onto the island. Nad Bunag reporting for Thai PBS World. And we can say that Pattaya's tourism has been improving after the COVID-19 pandemic. But there are still many issues that Pattaya has to watch out for. Let's find out more in this report by Atika and Kun Saknan. 
Pattaya is one of the most popular coastal cities for tourists, with hundreds of thousands of visitors each year coming to enjoy the beaches, walking streets, shopping, and the renowned Tiffany's Chill. The special administrative region also plays a part in the Eastern Economic Corridor, the strategic plan to promote Thailand's economic development, the aim of which is to become the regional gateway of Asia. As COVID-19 struck, Pattaya's economy was severely affected by the pandemic, as 80% of the local economy relies on tourism. Now, the city is recovering and is back in business. ปิดร้านไปหลายจําเอ่อเกิน 50% the world's famous Tiffany shows was also affected, as Cho had to go dark during the pandemic, yet the company had to bear the cost of the business maintenance. Because of COVID-19, we were one of the very first businesses in the country to be closed. During that time, is uh, Tiffany's, although there's no show, but we still um, hired people to come to work um, because we have the office workers we also have to maintain all the buildings and, and other things as well. As the pandemic eased, Pattaya's economy began to recover, with significant changes in target groups as some international tourists are still restricted from traveling, paving the way for the long-neglected potential target group, Thais. นักท่องเที่ยวไทยก็เข้ามานะครับเข้ามาแล้วก็ได้รับการต้อนรับจากเอ่อร้านเรียกว่าร้านอาหารต่างๆในวอคิสตรีตนะครับก็คือแต่
But to go far sustainably, we need to ensure the quality of life of the locals so they can live in an environment where everyone, locals, tourists, and the municipality are responsible as they enjoy the beauty of Pattaya. Atikan Kunsaknan reporting for Thai PBS World. From Pattaya, now let's move on to Thra province. In fact, this place has been designated as a special economic zone for decades already. However, people in the province are not so excited about it. But let's find out more about its potential as a special economic zone with Tulip Daksu from Blau. The economic 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 เพราะว่าโดยดั้งเดิมเนี่ยทางจังหวัดตราดมองว่าจุดนี้คือจะเป็นจุดในเรื่องของการเป็นคลังสินค้าในการพักสินค้าจากทางกรุงเทพจากทางจังหวัดต่างๆเนี่ยที่จะทําการส่งออกไปยังทางประเทศกัมพูชาเพราะเมื่อมันมีสินค้ามาพักในจุดนี้ได้มากขึ้นการส่งออกเนี่ยมูลค่ามันจะเพิ่มขึ้นโดยปริยายเลยโดยอัตโนมัติ That was the original plan when Thai government announced years ago that t r a t would be special economic zone. The infrastructures had been built, power grids, waterworks, and logistics. What changed the dynamic was when the government changed its mind and created its e n economic corridor. The grand plan s o u n d and looked promising. Investors were excited, locals were excited, but the corridors do not include t r a t มันเกิดความสะดุดของแนวความคิดของรัฐบาลเปลี่ยนแนวคิดเพราะรัฐบาลเปลี่ยนมุมมองว่าเราไม่มีอะไรใหม่ในประเทศเราจึงตั้ง EEC ขึ้นมาเพื่อให้เกิดการพัฒนา Life of Drat goes on with or without government's push the province trade with Cambodia actively with electrical wire being the highest value export followed by soft drink and granulated sugar However, when R10 route was announced, it got Thai people's hopes up again. R10 is the name of the 924-kilometer-long route connecting cities in three countries together, from Bangkok, Thailand, to g o k g o n g Cambodia, and to Ga Mau of Vietnam. A decade has passed. The R10 part in Drat Province looks neat, while the part in Cambodia is under construction. The government announced an upgrade to the road a year ago. R10 represents hopes for many in t h r a t province. Hope that will bring more tourists and businesses to the eastern region of Thailand. That means that this route should be convenient and well connected. What you see here is Highway Number 48 in Gokgong Province of Cambodia, which is a part of R10 route that connect Cambodia to Thailand and Vietnam. Many Cambodians along the route are not aware of R10, though. They know Highway Number 48 in front of their houses is being redone, and it will look beautiful in the next two years. They don't know that it carries so much potential and expectation. <laughs> This man said he has been living here since 1991. He said R10 route is in Phnom Penh, not here. However, road number 48 in front of his house is being expanded. The construction contract is 39 months long, and it has started a year ago. This 25-year-old shopkeeper has been working here for a year now. She said she has seen the construction in front of the shop ever since she moves here, and she knows nothing about R10. This Cambodian tuk-tuk driver has been working in this area for about 10 years now. He comes out to the market every day, waiting for customers. He said he knows nothing about R10, not even Highway Number 48. <laughs> <laughs> Though local people might not be aware of the initiatives, it was reported in Cambodian media that the Cambodian government hopes that R10 will boost the tourism industry, transportation, and also help facilitate the flow of goods in the region. Not just the Cambodian government, the Thai business operators also put hope in the routes. อันดับแรกเลยนะฮะที่ผมมองนะก็คือเรื่องการท่องเที่ยว
เราสามารถเชื่อมโยงการท่องเที่ยวเนี่ยจากจังหวัดตราดนะครับไปถึงสีนูวิวรวมทั้งไปถึงเวียดนามเส้นทางนี้เป็นเส้นทางที่สําคัญมากเกี่ยวกับท่องเที่ยวรวมทั้งรวมทั้งถ้าถ้าเกิดเ,เรื่องว่าการขนสินค้าเนี่ยผ่าน3ประเทศนี้ก็จะสะดวกมากครับผมแต่ถ้าเกิดเมื่อไหร่เปิดได้แล้วรวมทั้งเส้นทางทางทางเรือด้วยเราก็การการท่องเที่ยวเนี่ยก็จะคึกคักคึกคลื่นมากทุกอย่างครับเ,เราจะไปทําการค้าได้หรืออะไรได้ต้องเริ่มที่การท่องเที่ยวก่อนทําความรู้จักกันก่อนอันนี้สําคัญมากครับเมื่อไหร่เรามีการท่องเที่ยวที่ดีสัมพันธ์ที่ดีการค้าก็จะมาเองครับพอการค้ามาตอนนี้เนี่ยการพัฒนาทางด้านต่างๆก็จะตามมาครับ t ูลิปนักสมภพลาว reporting for Thai PBS World and Thrad is definitely a special economic zone to watch out for and now let's have a look at the other stories in our weekly roundup Prime Minister Prayut c h a n o c h a has dissolved the House of Representatives paving the way for a general election The House dissolution came just two days before the current four-year term of the House was due to end. Thailand held its last general election on March 24, 2019. Prayut is hoping to make a political return as a prime ministerial candidate of the United Thai Nation Party. The Election Commission has set May 14 t h for the general election and the first week of April for candidate registration. An election is constitutionally required to be held 45 days after, but within 60 days of the House dissolution. Under the Constitution, each political party has the option of nominating up to three candidates for prime minister. The governor of p r a t i b u r i Province ordered the immediate closure of a foundry and declared the plant off limits to unauthorized personnel after radiation from cesium-137 was detected among other metallic scrap. The finding of a radioactive material, which is in a steel cylinder, is thought to have ended the frantic search, which began on March 10, t h when it was discovered that it was missing from a steam power plant in s i m a h a p o r District. With the election date confirmed to be May 14, t h in this episode of Talking Politics, we talked to Dr. p a n i t a n w a t a n a y a g o n as he talks about the military dominance in Thai politics as well as the best case scenario after the elections. Even while the country is gearing up for a general election. There are still persistent concerns about military intervention. Prime Minister Prayut Chan O Cha himself recently had to brush off journalists' questions about the possibility of a coup d'état. Well, I think the classic uh, domination of military forces directly intervening into Thai politics, mm. ruling the country, uh, wearing uniforms. Uh, And serving at the same time as a military chiefs, mm. those days are almost gone, mm. limited. Okay. Uh, only maybe extremely special circumstances that uh, going to, to, to be more difficult in this new normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, simply on one on one factor, forces uh, to allow the military chief to do that are not under uh, the chiefs' uh, direct mm. control anymore, especially in Bangkok. You mean the structure of the armed forces is much different from the past? Exactly, oh, yes. exactly. That's one. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, of course, the the popular sentiment mm. inside Thailand and outside of the country is so different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you cannot turn back the clock, and mm-hmm. ex- examples are everywhere. Uh, on on borders, you see the attempt to turn back the clock, mm-hmm. and that's ended up in disaster. That's number two. Yeah. But number three, and maybe this is the Defining answer: The military is already, you know, contesting in elections. <laughs> uh, they have elaborated, you know, structures that support okay. some of their interests, right. yeah. especially in the Senate. So, some of my academic friends say, "Well, that's another kind of military intervention by itself." <laughs> but but the p u b l i c a c t e d done, right? <laughs> public, publicly accepted uh-huh. uh, by the referendum mm. uh, for the time being. Okay. And this is not also quite different from when you see the South Korean military forces you know, 
gradually, you know, stepping down and then entering politics. Mm -hmm. uh, the Indonesian military forces gradually stepping down. And, and years ago, uh, before that, uh, forces in Latin American countries, mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. They're gradually designing, you know, the political system when they are, uh, when they were in full power to allow them to, to return uh, for the contestation, mm -hmm. for the popular uh, uh, support, and they became uh, leaders of different countries. Mm -hmm. right? And this is already happening in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So when you add these three uh, factors, the possibility of the classic, the real military mm -hmm. intervention uh, in the old ways, uh, maybe, maybe almost gone or gone, but then again, no one can say for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, uh, happening last time when mm -hmm. people said uh, there's no coup. Uh, but but, but, but uh, I would say in a new normal, uh, unless there's a big breakdown in terms of uh, confrontation between the elites, mm -hmm. between the masses, between the middle class, yeah. and uh, there is a chaotic situation, mm -hmm. and the security, domestic security is, is out of control, then maybe the military uh, uh, may step in, but that was case scenario. Thailand's two top leaders and one's comrades in arms, General Bayut Jan O Cha and General Pavit Wong Suwan, are going their separate ways in the upcoming election to try to become the next prime minister. If they are rejected at the polls, will they be willing to quietly walk away and let politicians run the country? It depends on on two or three factors, mm. uh, but of course the ultimate indicator uh, will be uh, support to any single political party. Mm -hmm. If you win decisively mm -hmm. and are able to form uh, one ruling party government yeah. elected, mm -hmm. I think there's no doubt. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be difficult. But, but of course, it, it did happen in uh, in our neighbor that yeah, that didn't go well with the uh, military. Okay. Uh, but, but in Thailand, I think mm -hmm. the situation may be different. Mm -hmm. uh, that, but, but that possibility uh, is also may not be the highest. Mm -hmm. The second, maybe the highest possibility is a coalition government. And, and then, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. then shared, shared powers mm -hmm. uh, is a successful formula. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way out, meaning that the military may have some elected Mm -hmm. representatives mm -hmm. uh, and other populist parties mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, get elected and yeah. through the negotiation mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be tough to negotiate too yeah. uh, uh, depending on uh, how many MPs uh, you win yeah. on both uh, mm -hmm. uh, party list 100 mm -hmm. or 500 in the parliament mm -hmm. and then negotiation once it's done like in many countries in Europe then you can see you can form a coalition government mm -hmm. and I think the um, culture of coalition government across the old ideologies are, 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 now, are now more possible. Mm -hmm. now possible. The, the confrontation between the red shirts yeah. and the yellow shirts are almost gone. So, uh, so. Only emerging a new interesting <laughs> uh, uh, challenges between mm -hmm. young generation mm -hmm. wanting Thailand to go much more progressive. Okay. And then maybe the uh, older generation who uh, uh, concerns about continuity, certainty. Mm -hmm. uh, that requires a compromise uh, through this election mm -hmm. and the after election negotiation. Uh, the composition of the uh, coalition government will tell you mm -hmm. how uh, successful this negotiation yeah. uh, will be because uh, as expected uh, from the polls, mm -hmm. no one expected to win decisively. But again, the polls were wrong last time. And that wraps up tonight's edition of This Week with Thai PBS World. We hope you enjoyed this special episode tonight. Join us every Friday at 10.45 p.m. only on Thai PBS. And don't forget to follow us on social media, including our website, thaipbsworld.com, for all the latest updates about Thailand as well as analyses. And now it's time for me to enjoy this barbecue. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Sawadee
การในยุคนี้ท